Well, the conservation of momentum is a little bit more tricky than the conservation of mass. Conservation of momentum comes from Newton's second law that uh, basically says that F is equal to MA, and we can write this in vector form. Uh, that's a, a law that you should all be familiar with. Um, so let's apply our, uh, our general transport equation, which we have up here, to, uh, to conservation of momentum. So first we've got to figure out what our property is. Uh, so momentum is, uh, is, let's just write that out here. Momentum uh, is mass times velocity. So if we, we need to know uh, what the momentum per unit mass is, so we can simply divide uh, that by mass. And so momentum per unit mass is just equal to V. And that's the property. Remember, for our general transport equation, we need to know what this what this property is per unit mass. And we're doing conservation of momentum, so we take momentum per unit mass, and that's just uh, uh, the velocity. So let's plug this now into our equation. Um, so we've got uh, d rho v dt, where I've just plugged in v for the uh, for phi up there, plus del dot, and then this is rho, and I'm going to have two v's right next to each other. Rho v v is equal to our generation term. Now we need to think about what generates momentum. Uh, G is the generation of momentum. And that, uh, from again, from uh, Newton's second law, tells us that, uh, that momentum can be generated from either body or surface forces. So G, in our case, is going to be uh, body forces. We'll just call it F sub B or surface forces, F sub S. So these are body forces, and these are surface forces. So if we go back to our control volume up here, um, that control volume can be affected by, uh, by forces either on the surface of that control uh, volume or, uh, or, or body forces. Uh, the body force that we're going to include is just uh, is gravity. So uh, we're going to include the effect of gravity, but you could also include uh, an electromagnetic field, for example. That would be an example of a body force. Uh, the surface force that we're going to include is, uh, is the, the, sh the, the shear forces on the, on the surface of this uh, object, shear and pressure. So let's just write that out, shear and pressure forces. So those are the ones that we're going to include there. But uh, if we just plug this now into our equation, we get F sub B plus F sub S are the, uh, the body and surface forces. Okay, uh, so now let's, uh, let's keep working through this and see if we can manipulate this a little bit to, to put it in a different form. There's an identity uh, that says that del dot u v can be rewritten as u dot del v plus v del dot u. That's just a vector identity. So let's plug that in uh, for this term right here. Let's, let's call this guy u, that rho times v. We're going to call that u, and, um, and uh, use this identity to rewrite this term here. So what we're going to get, oh, and uh, let's use the chain rule uh, on this first guy, on this first term. So if we use the chain rule there, uh, we're going to get rho... Uh, dv dt plus v 
d rho dt uh, plus, now let's use our identity for that second term. Uh, we're going to get um, the u, which is rho v dot del times v plus v uh, del dot rho v. And I just remember rho v is what we're using for u there, or what we've uh, substituted in for u. Uh, so that now is all equal to f sub b plus f sub s. All right, so in this form, uh, this is this is really useful because um, because we can see that uh, our conservation of mass equation actually appears directly in in the, the way that we've written this here. So conservation of mass is d rho d t plus del dot rho v, and uh, and we've got a d rho d t here, and uh, and then we've got a del dot rho v, uh, del dot rho v right over here. So these two terms are actually just v uh, multiplied by conservation of mass. So that means that when that uh, you know you can take the conservation of mass, we know that the right hand side of that is equal to zero, and so v times 0 is still going to be equal to 0. So those two terms now drop out. Okay, uh, now let's talk about fb and fs. So fb is our body force, and like I said, we're only going to include gravity, although you could include some electromagnetic or, or other uh, a body force of that type, but, uh, but we're going to write the gravity force as minus rho g times the gradient of h, the height. And, uh, and then our surface forces are just a little bit more complicated. Um, so our, our surface forces uh, are equal to del dot sigma, uh, and that's a tensor. Sigma is, uh, is the fluid stress tensor. So, um, so our surface forces are the divergence of the fluid stress tensor. Let's just write that out here. Is the fluid stress tensor. And essentially what that is, it's a 3 by 3 tensor that tells us what the, the stresses are on the surface of this fluid. So let's draw a little fluid particle here. And let's just look at one side of this, for example. Uh, on, on any one of these sides, you can have a stress that is perpendicular to that. And so since this is in the x direction, we'll call this the, uh, the sigma sub xx. That's the, in fact, let me put the sigma there. Uh, sigma sub xx. That's the stress in the x direction on the uh, x surface. So um, then we can also have on this, uh, on this surface a stress in the y direction. So that would be sigma uh, sub x y. So it's on the x surface uh, or on the plane that's normal to the x axis, uh, but it's in the y direction. And then we can also have a, a stress that is uh, that is normal or on the plane that's normal to the x-axis, but it's in the z direction. So that's uh, sigma sub x z. So the way that we we write out this uh, fluid uh, stress tensor is we have sigma x x, uh, sigma x y, sigma x z, and then we'd have sigma y x, sigma y y, sigma y z and then sigma zx, uh, sigma zy, and sigma zz. So this should be a review from fluid mechanics. Uh, the fluid stress tensor is something that you should have learned about there. But essentially, it's just the, the stresses on the surface of this fluid. And we have this slick way of writing them as this, uh, this tensor. 
And so our surface forces are the divergence of the fluid stress tensor. Okay, so, uh, so we can take this one step further and, uh, and assume that, uh, that our fluid is a continuum and that we're working with a Newtonian fluid. So let's say that uh, it's a continuum and it's a Newtonian fluid. And that's pretty slick because that means that our, uh, that our fluid stress tensor can be uh, defined uh, in a different way. Uh, we can write it as lambda del dot V minus P times the Kronecker delta plus two mu times the strain rate tensor. So this is the strain rate tensor. Uh, mu is uh, what's called the viscosity of the fluid. Uh, delta is the Kronecker delta. That just means that these those terms that are multiplied by it only appear on the diagonal of this stress tensor. Uh, and then lambda up here is what's called the coefficient of bulk viscosity. Okay, so let's plug all of this in, all, all of our new information into this set of equations. Uh, so we're left with uh, rho dv dt. So I'm, I'm coming up here back to our, our main equation here, and I'm just going to plug in everything that we know. Now that next term drops out because of conservation of mass. Uh, so, so this term here is going to drop out, and this term here is going to drop out. So we're left with this term here. So we've got plus rho v dot del v is equal to our body forces. And I'm going to uh, plug in what we have up there for body forces minus rho g grad h uh, or del h. Uh, and then uh, plus our surface forces plus del dot sigma. And instead of... Uh, sigma, I'm going to plug in because we're going to assume that this is a continuum and it's a Newtonian fluid. So I've got lambda uh, del dot V minus P times the Kronecker delta plus 2 mu viscosity times the strain rate tensor. Okay, this set of equations, this is actually a vector equation, and this uh, set of equations. So it, so it gives us three equations if we're working in uh, Cartesian coordinates here. It's a vector equation. Um, this is what's called uh, the Navier-Stokes equations. And essentially, this is just a definition of fluid properties. It's, it's conservation of momentum. That, uh, that the fluid has to obey if, it's, if it truly is a continuum and a Newtonian fluid, okay? So that's what this set of equations is. And remember, it's actually three equations. Our, our uh, conservation of mass is a single equation. It's a scalar equation because del dot V, um, uh, see, we've got uh, a vector dotted with another vector that gives us a scalar. So this is a scalar equation. Uh, but uh, but the Navier-Stokes equations are actually three equations. It's a it's a set of vector equations.